It's time to get comfortable and get going. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic Tees. Their high quality and pocket friendly menswear is made for every man in mind, not just the super fit model type. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code HOLLY. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. True Classic. Look good. Feel good. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before we start, I want to do something that I haven't done before, but I think it's important. I want to welcome my new Patreon members. Um, My Patreon is a wonderful place for you to get bonus content and support my podcast. And I'm so grateful for your support that I want to give you guys a quick shout out. So I want to welcome Hamish, Kirsten, Mark, Frank, Paolo, Monkey Yosh, James, Nick and Promo Champ. Thank you guys so much for supporting my podcast. Now, what we're all here for is my amazing guest today. In 2022 alone, my guest has been featured in Hustler, secured a Brazzers contract, and won an Avian Award for Best Curve Appeal. Let's welcome the incredibly fabulous Ebony Mystique. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm like trying to keep my composure being on your podcast. You're the star. I'm like the baby star. So it's a pleasure, <laughs> honor. Thank you so much, Holly, for having me today. Oh, of course. Well, everyone's here to hear from you, not from me. As yeah. much as I love to talk about myself. Please do. Um, we girl. are we are here for you. Um, <laughs> you look amazing, of course. Like I mentioned when you walked in, like I kind of, I tried to dress myself up a little bit more today. She looks amazing. Because I knew you were going to show up like all blinged out and you look incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. I try. Did you, so the jacket and the bra, so for those of you who are not watching and are listening, she's got like this decked out jacket with like a ton of pearls on it and then a bra with, yeah, with a bunch of, um, Embellishments. Embellishments, yes. Yeah. So I kind of put this together. I kind of bought them separately Mm -hmm. and thought, you know what? I'm coming on that girl, Holly Randall's podcast. I better give a little bit today. So I thought this this would be appropriate for you. Yeah. Yeah. You look amazing. And you're going to the Urban X Awards tonight, right? I am. It is the day. Today is the day. Thank you to all who have voted and nominated from, or well, I was already nominated. I don't know how that happened, but thank you who voted. So let's see what happens. Let's see if we take it home tonight. What were you nominated for? Hottest Ink Star. And I didn't know I got that, um, that nomination because I didn't even know I was that inked, but I got it. So we're going to see what happens with that. And I shouted out my ink, some of my ink people because I thought that was appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> so really- Hottest Ink Star for next 2022. We'll see if Ebony takes it home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you just started, so you have, like, so much potential ahead of you. Oh, yes. Which um, is very exciting. I'm so, like, I'm so motivated to do more and to see, like, where this journey is going to take me. It's been amazing. I'm totally being myself, which is super amazing. And I'm excited to see what happens with this whole adult journey. So how do you mean you're being yourself? Like, do, are you saying that the career path that you've now chosen, you feel like allows you to be yourself? Is that what you mean? Or? I feel like my personality on set, like even though there is some script and there's some dialogue and of course you have to follow that for certain scenes, mm-hmm. it's there, but you, I'm always able to kind of give my personality into my scenes. So mm-hmm. that's what I kind of mean. Just being able to carry my personality mm-hmm. into my work, which in my other life, before adult, I'm still giving personality, but it didn't really fit this lifestyle. I was a nurse. I'm still a nurse mm. by licensure. I just retired from the medical industry and did this. Wow. Um, and that was during COVID or when it was called Corona, during the whole pandemic. I was able to come into this career and kind of retire from nursing. So it's been an absolute blessing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, those are two, there are two very different jobs, but also... S- 
I don't know, sort of similar in a way. I mean, I know. So my mother was a nurse and my sister's a nurse. Wow. And out. there's something about like, there, there's a real intimacy to nursing. And I also feel like there's a real intimacy to performing as well. Exactly. So um, there's like kind of a caregiving aspect to both. I know like some people might feel like that's a ridiculous thing to say about adult, but there is like, I don't know, when you're taking care of your patients, it's like, that connection that you need to establish to make them feel like safe and taken care of. And I, I kind of feel like that also translates into when you're doing scenes. Do you feel that way? It makes sense to me because I mean, first of all, we're dealing with the human body mm -hmm. firstly. So if you think about it from an anatomy perspective, it, it fits. I mean, you have to know the human body to kind of generate love and affection. Otherwise you're all over the place. And I think that's important to connect with people an adult, because you don't know who these people are most of the time, but you have to have a connection with them, I think, to give the magic that is set forth yeah. to do a really successful scene, you know? But like with nursing, the money won't keep you. You can't yeah. pay enough to really save a life. So I don't know if it's that way for adult, because I don't think that the money is what is keeping me here. It's just like the autonomy mm -hmm. um, that I didn't have with adult. Like, even if I dressed up, because some of the body enhancements that I have now, I had through my nursing career. Mm -hmm. But for a doctor to be like, oh, my government name, mm -hmm. um, you look really sexy today. Makeup done, hair done. I would love for a doctor to tell me, but it's not the right place for that. Mm -hmm. That I think that might be like a sexual harassment yeah. case for some people. So they're going to like bear away from it. But, you know, I think there is a connection mm -hmm. to both. You have to love you have to have some love and yeah. care. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so how did you make that transition from nursing to adult? How'd that come about? So as we all know, with that pandemic, with it was at that time called Corona. So I was a frontliner. So I had all the information, I guess, first than civilians. And it was very strange for me. I had just transferred out of the ICU uh, aspect of nursing, critical care, which I was doing for years, into the call center type of nursing where if you were to call in and you get advice from a nurse, that's what I was doing. And these calls were coming in really crazy. And the job field was crazy. I was a new nurse in that position. So it was either at that time, because they had to close down, like everything was closed. Remember when we were all in the house? Oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> so that affected my job. And it was either you were going to take leave or they were kind of it was getting strange for me. So I had hit up one of my adult friends, Pinky Triple X, who is a legend in porn. She's retired now. And I was like, and I played with her before about this thing. Like, you know, I could do porn. But she was like, girl, just stay a nurse. Like, totally did not take me seriously. But this time she did. And I was just like, you know, my job is getting weird. Like, I don't know what's going on, but you should probably are going to be staying in the house soon. Like, there's like something called like, corona going on and it's getting weird i gotta stay home you think i can shoot adele <laughs> can i shoot for your site and she was like what and i was like no i'm serious like i think i can do it like come on let me do it and she she was like all right and she told me the main thing was like we'll do we're gonna do this but understand this does not go away so that was the advice she gave me that stuck with me through this whole Which transition a great piece of you advice. know just that that whole sentence full of power is one thing that I had to consider. Mm -hmm. So I did the scene. <laughs> she booked me and she gave me a ray. It was actual, it was very professional, my first scene for her site. And it went viral. And guess what I did? Huh. I called her and told her to take it down. Because <laughs> at that time I had still went to work. Like I did my scene. I didn't think it was going to like get where it got. And one of the one of my guy friends at my job who wasn't in the same position, he was a TSR, was a nurse. He was like, I seen that. What? Like some weird stuff like that. Like I seen what he did or something like that. I'm like, oh shit. This is going to get like, this is like, oh no. You thought so, your job was getting weird before. Yeah. And now it's really going to get weird. So me personally, I didn't really want to answer to anybody. I didn't want to be that girl in the office talking about like, things that did not pertain to my job, safety of a patient, mm -hmm. or like anything that I'm not. I didn't want to answer to any of my supervisors if it did get to the office. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just gonna like cash out my leave and my sick time and like retire out of this. And what it was, was Pinky gave me another good part of advice was once we did the scene to do get an OnlyFans. 
Mm-hmm. She was like, because they're going to be looking for you. I didn't even know what OnlyFans was. And I was not a porn connoisseur. Like, I didn't really watch Adele. Um, so I didn't understand what she meant by getting an OnlyFans at that moment. But I did when I got that money after that scene. And I was like, wow, I thought it was illegal. I'm like, is something wrong? Like, am I going to go to jail? <laughs> As And I was like, you know what? This is enough money to probably leave my job. And I did. And it ended up being a really good decision. Shout out to my like nursing career because it doesn't go away. I'm still a nurse. I'm not going to ever give away my license. I'm, I own, you know, I earned it. So I still have it. When I'm in foreign countries, like it just happened and we're on a plane coming back home and they're like, so if anyone on this plane has a medical, like if you're a doctor or a nurse, can you please, because someone, like I still have to be that person if Mm -hmm. I need to be a Mm first-liner so it will never go away. And I don't want it to. It's something that I have and I don't want to give it away because I'll literally save your life, Holly. (laughs) (laughs) I know I don't look like I will, but that's a gag. Like, literally. like Man, I really hope that never comes down to that. (laughs) Yeah, but, yeah, so no, you're perfect in every way. But just in case, I'm your girl. Okay, okay, good. (laughs) I mean, yeah, you should definitely... You worked hard to be a nurse. I mean, I watched my sister go through nursing school. I know it's a lot of work. Um, Kind of, it's interesting that you had like just transferred out of the ICU when COVID hit because my sister had actually just transferred into the ICU when COVID hit. So she like really got railroaded by all of those crazy cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who did you do your first scene with? Um, So my first initial singing for Pinky Triple X was uh, with Rob Piper. Okay. So shout out to Rob Piper. He's lovely. He is. We all love Rob. So how, I mean, how was it, tell me, like, take me through that scene. What was it like showing up? Were you nervous? Was it your first time meeting him? How did that all play out? So I feel like I wasn't nervous because I already knew who it was for. I knew the production team, the crew members already. So in that part, and I knew that I was there to fuck. And it was like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Um, the main thing was I was masked and I asked her to do that. So I wanted some sort of like mysterious portion of the scene. I wasn't real confident with me showing my face yet because mm-hmm. I didn't want, again, but it didn't work because people, even that guy at my job, I think it was my tattoos. I was going to say, how did he recognize Yeah, my you? tattoos and kind of the the way I did the scene, like, I'm, I love fashion, so I was really fashionable. Like, it kind of gave it away. Like, did you it, hear your voice, maybe? Did you that, talk? too, I did. Yeah, so they totally knew. The best thing didn't work, and it was like, it didn't work. So I was like, take it down. <laughs> like, oh, no. It didn't work out. Um, pardon, I'm not supposed to make noise. But, yeah, the fact of the matter is um, I wasn't nervous at all. Robert was really professional, and that's how he is. He's just really professional. He came in and was just, like, laying it down. He knew that it was my first scene, and it was amazing. I think I even squirted it with him my first time, and I haven't done that with anybody before. But like, It was like... Maybe a teenager or something. Mm-hmm. Appropriate teen, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. When I first initiated the, the fact that I knew how to, to squirt, but I hadn't done it before mm-hmm. in a long time. And then it, I think I did. It was amazing. It went good. And then how did you feel afterwards? Um, I got paid. I was like, let's go to like Roof Chris. <laughs> like, how did I do? The, the, the director made me feel real confident That's because great. he was really happy. And he told me like, for this to be your first scene, like the confidence in the r- directors, I think you know that as being like a Mago production lady. Like when you give us like the kudos, like and you're smiling, we feel that we're looking at you for yeah. that kind of like, is it good? And we can't really say that. That's where we can't keep cutting. Like, is this good? Is this good? Yeah. So just the fact that he gave me like, like it was good. I felt good mm-hmm. and true indeed. And trust in him. I mean. The Pinky is, for me, like a legend. And I think her production sense and the way they kind of put things together for what they did was good. So I was confident in them. Mm -hmm. And it worked. So they were right. I was just like, take it down. She was like, no. (laughs) And actually, she did for a while. But then I guess people kept hitting her up. Like, who's the girl in the mask? Like, people that didn't recognize me, of Mm -hmm. course. And they wanted it more. So she called me and was like, we got to do another scene. Yeah. Like... What's up? Yeah. 
And the next scene that I did, that was with Jovan Jordan. Mm-hmm. The mask was off. Mm-hmm. That scene I did squirt. Mm-hmm. And that one just double viral. And the rest is history. So was when you did that second scene, had you quit your nursing job yet? Yes. Okay. So you were done. like ready to give it all. Off. You were going for Let's it. Go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then how did you end up getting signed as a Brazzers contract star? I don't, I don't know to this day. I think my astrologer is telling me to accept my blessings. It's yours. Because <laughs> I asked him, like, even them, like, why? Like, me? He was like, yes, bitch, you. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't asked the court. I haven't asked... Mind you, I haven't asked them yet. Why me? So did but, they hit you up, or did you so hit what them happened up? was X three, the first expo for X Biz, mm-hmm. was it twenty twenty one? I think we're in last year. It was this year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was this year, like the beginning of the year, January twenty twenty two. That was their first X Biz's first like fan um, uh, mainstream adult star experience one on one. They did an it's called X three Expo. And I signed for browsers. And I've done a bunch of scenes for them at this point. I'm like totally like I'm your girl already. Mm-hmm. Like we're family. I don't know. We got on stage. It was the weirdest thing ever. I was already signing for them. And then they were like, all right, Ebony. And they kept checking on me that day, which was weirdly elastic. Shout out to you, one of the producer directors for browser. She was kept checking on me that day. Like, how you feeling? But that's how she is anyway on set. So I was like, okay. But we all had to get on stage to, like, present something. I think we were, they said we were supposed to go twerk or something. Mm -hmm. So we all got on stage. Angela White, Phoenix, Lulu, everybody. And then the next thing I know, Phoenix is, like, something about, like, yeah, so Ebony. I'm like, what the heck are you guys doing? Everybody's, like, looking. We're on stage. She's like, so, Ebony, how would you feel if you were to be, like, browsers, exclusive contract star. I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? I just fucking dropped dead on stage. Like literally almost like it was a death drop, but I like, it's like, oh my God, it's happening. So that's how that happened. I had no freaking clue that I was going to be signed. They're very strategic and <laughs> the way they change your life. Wow. It was like, what the hell just happened? Like, I've never heard of them doing that they've before. They've never done that before. And I think that was the most historical thing for them. They're like, we've never done a live, yeah, like, exclusive contract announcement. Yeah. And then, excuse me, then I had to keep it a secret <laughs> for about a month. And I was, like, in Prague doing browsers. Uh, they sent me out to Europe. Well, I was already out in Europe, but at that time, my um, contract had came while I was in Europe. So I did, like, an exclusive scene with in Prague for browsers with Jordy. It was just amazing, but I couldn't say a thing. Yeah. That's the hardest part, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> 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 and then they did this amazing, um, amazing announcement with, I don't want to mess up his name. It's amazing photographer. Uh, orangutan? Uh, yeah, orangutan, yeah. It, okay, I said it right. Or there, orange tan, I don't know. We know who you I are. I know who he is, but you're, you are. You're, I don't think name. I've ever had to, to say pronou- we need I've to never like said it out right. It, right, but we know who you are. And it was amazing, and then they announced it on their socials and my socials, and it was great. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Um, and how has the experience been for you so far? Amazing. Amazing. They totally cater to what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I got some things coming up. I'm super excited about. You guys are going to be psyched. You've been asking for some of the things and they totally, I'm totally into my fans, you mm-hmm. know? So if, if you want it, if I'm into it, if I can do it, I got you. Yeah. So we got some things coming up. So it's been amazing. Shout do out you, to browsers. Do you have a favorite scene that you've shot for them? Besides, of course, the one that we did. <laughs> You know what? And I'm like, I was about to tell you like glam mm-hmm. and I was ab- I was going there because I had to think about the question, but you were one of the only one because I do a lot of like personality, quirky, give like your personality, Ebony shoots. And I think my fans can contest to that. They see a lot of my like goofy side, like mm-hmm. personality, but you gave me glam and that's goddess. Mm-hmm. My name is Ebony Goddess Mystique, but you can cut it up. There's a lot of verbiage to that. So Ebony or Goddess or Mystique. But I still feel like fashion and glam and 
beautification is really important part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And you highlighted that. And not to mention, it was with Kira Nior and Ricky Johnson. So to be honest, and before you even said that, I had to think about it. You have given me the yours. Yours in my first scene, because it was with Jordy and Alexis Tay, and that would kind of set me off. So I have to give my first scene props with yeah. browsers. Yeah. And then yours. And I actually have another scene that's coming out where they gave me glam again. Mm -hmm. So my glam scenes, if anybody was interested, are really important to my yeah. brand and who I am. Yeah. yeah. I love the quirky because I get to be fun and like go yeah. crazy. Yeah. But I'm a goddess. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, that was a that was a really fun scene to shoot. I actually, I mean, I always just say that if we're talking about scenes and I've shot to just take the pressure off so that people don't feel obligated to say it was the one that I directed. No, but you are that girl. But it was it was a great scene, and oh my god! And I, mean, I actually asked for that. Like, I wanted like um, like nineteen fifties kind of because that's important era, like jazzy. It, like that was in one of our creative director meetings. Mm -hmm. So, the, again, that's them giving kind of important to give you what you kind of are asking for. And they kind yeah, of give that. Yeah, that they're listening to you. They're and they listening. They want your and feedback they want the and feed they want you involved. Which exactly. Which is not everyone does that. And you don't get that too much, of course, when you're probably not contracted. You're mm -hmm. kind of just like trying to build your brand and like it's whatever. Like whatever you want me to do. That's the kind of girl I was. Like, yeah. As long as it was in my means, because I never want to regret anything that I'm doing. So yeah. That's important. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then Ooh. we're going to come back. Get a drink. Shout out to Liquid Death. Yeah, shout out to Liquid Angelina, Death. Or Angelina. Joanna Angel and Small Hands. There. Joanna Angel, yeah. She tried to send me an entire- um, They give cases, like boatloads. She tried to send me a whole uh, pallet, like 150 cases. <laughs> no lies. Where's the lie here? We love you. No, and it's I love super it, good. But, like, like where if you haven't tried it, it guys- it's good. It's really refreshing. And also, too, I will say that I, this is so funny, this has turned into a liquid death commercial, that, even though okay, it was not intentional. Okay, we want our props, guys. No, we just love you. But um, I just read this article about how microplastics have, like, killed 90% of the plankton in the um, ocean. Yeah, no plastic, so, in the Atlantic guys. Ocean. Come on. So, death to plastic, liquid death is Definitely. aluminum. Fully recyclable. Plastic is not as recyclable as you guys think it is. Come on. There's actually get like a whole it. conspiracy that there was this PR campaign. I won't get too into it, um, but uh, pushed by like ExxonMobil oh, to suggest on. that plastic is more recyclable than it is. It's really not. It's not. So avoid plastic when you Education can. Education is power. Even though I have a plastic Starbucks cup here. It's Starbucks. <laughs> All right, guys, hang tight. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by True Classic Tees. Finding the perfect t-shirt can be so frustrating. The thing is, either way, it's too tight around your gut or just big and boxy. True Classic wants to make it easy to look good and feel good. So their high quality and pocket friendly menswear is made with every man in mind. It's the True Classic way. So guys, no excuses. It's time to upgrade. Almost all men's t-shirts are designed to look good on a certain body type. Think skinny models with six packs. But let's be honest, most guys aren't packing anything but a few beers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Personally, I like a man with a little meat on his bones. Fellas, it's simple. You are wearing the wrong clothes. True Classics tees taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter around the chest and shoulders. You can wear a True Classic with confidence. These are tailor-made to highlight your best assets. I got a few shirts for my husband and he loves them. They fit really well and they're super soft. So when we snuggle on the couch, he makes for an even better pillow. And for any of the big boys out there, they have long body options for the tall guys and up to XXXL on their staple colors. It's time to get comfortable and get going. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code HOLLY. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. True Classic. Look good and feel good. Okay, guys, we are back. So, Ebony, you have not been shy about admitting that you are a size queen. Oh, yeah. 
So um, who's the biggest guy that you've been with in the industry? Like people we would know. So initially it was Julio Gomez, but I believe he's now retired out. Um, so I it- think I've seen pictures of him and it's like a third leg. Yeah, he was signed to Vixen and then I don't know what he's doing now. So he was, I did a BJ scene with him and I was like, what? I thought I had like strep throat afterwards. <laughs> then I had to think about it like, girl, you just took down a trunk out your throat. Oh, okay. It's the dick sucking. So no strep throat. It was great, but he's retired. So now it's BK Brick and we've measured him hard and soft. So soft, he's like 13 and a half. But Erect it. He's almost like 15 inches, and this is no bull crap. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, okay, so how how do you take that? Like, what do you, is that? I don't know. And I'm not point, even the girl that t- takes it. I be seeing some of them girls smash him. Like, mm-hmm. how is that getting in your body, child? Yeah. So I do it through prayer. Through prayer? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, prayer. How does that work? I'm like, oh, Lord, please help. <laughs> Help me right now. Because how? But I think of it as like, well, children come out of these holes. This is true. So if that's the case, I can take this. And then I think about the other girls have done it. It's like, as long as I'm not going to die here, Mm -hmm. just do it. Just Mm -hmm. hurry up and like, let me enjoy it. So a lot of lube, a lot of prayer, a lot of practice before Mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Because we've done a lot of like one anal scenes. No, we did two. I think we did two. I know we did one. See, I can't even remember. And I think we're, we're not doing any more. We're not going to do any more, guys. You got that scene. <laughs> okay, I have to walk here. But uh, it's just a lot of um, a lot of preparation, I think, when you take bigger, yeah. bigger dicks. Do you find... I've heard some girls say that actually anal sex with big dicks is easier than vaginal sex. How, how is it for you? Is it... I think those girls are monstrous... <laughs> <laughs> Sluts with capital S. Like, go, girl. Like, can I train? Let me get your app or training. You know what, though? I will tell you. So Excuse I me. interviewed Lucy Hart, who's a trans woman. and she- I was going to say that. My trans, like, my gay community, they have the best advice for a- Well, so there's this doctor in New York who apparently is, like, a butthole expert. Wow. And can you can get surgery to make anal sex easier for you. Because I, I guess that. everyone's anal cavity is different. Like, some goes straight back. Some, like, bends exactly. down or something it's like true. that. So you Anatomy. could get your anal cavity straightened out to the point where taking a big dick would be much easier for you. We might have to go on the, um, we might have to get that number. I don't mind. I'm like, I don't mind no surgery. Like, help, <laughs> help me. But that's the thing, too. The anal cavity is different for everybody. Mm-hmm. So there is, like, things that you should know. Like, there is what people must know about sex. Like, when you get in the industry, you really start to learn about sex. Mm-hmm. Like, you think you're fucking. Nah. <laughs> when you get in the industry, you learn it as an art. Like, this is, like, why I even know my body can do that? Or I didn't even know that people do that. Or, like, what? Like, you know, you really start to learn. So I learned with anal. If it initially goes, first of all, a lot of lube. And I love, like, anal rockets. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys know what that is, but you, lube is really important for this aspect of sex. Mm-hmm. That hole is not usually, ac- I mean, it's tight mm-hmm. and very vascular. So if you were to put, there's this um, thing where you can put lube inside your butt already, like mm-hmm. an anal rocket. So there's lube inside of there. And then there's, is it kind of like one of those? Like, um, a, syringe, like a syringe, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've and had there, one of those. Uh-huh. So you can buy these like syringes for anal, not like guys. Listen to what I'm saying, please. I have to clarify things. I know <laughs> they're anal syringes for sex, and you'll put lube in them, and then you'll shoot it in your butt. And so there's already lube in there, and mm-hmm. that's amazing because now it's lubed inside. Mm. And then the guy puts it on his penis, and the gliding is amazing. But I think um, bowl preparation. There's like uh, balloons. Mm-hmm. that you can use. Mm-hmm. I get this from my... Shout out to my gay community because I know everything from... So, like, you can pump up your behind mm-hmm. and, and and it kind of loosens it up. Butt plugs for me don't work. Hmm. I think that's not... I think it's just for a look because as soon as those things come out, it's like, help! <laughs> like, that didn't work out at all. So... So you know, the balloon thing, so it can go in your butt and then uh-huh. you can inflate it yes. and then you can kind of change the side while it's mm-hmm. inside your anal cavity. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So the other thing is now when it's inserting, if it hurts, have them pull out mm-hmm. and try a different angle. Like you would adjust yourself and try it again. Mm-hmm. So the anal cavity is important. Mm-hmm. So that is true. 
Mm-hmm. It's just the same thing like the vag too, I think, though, because mm-hmm. sometimes you have to adjust because it's not always comfortable with mm-hmm. it. You know, you got to like adjust and then it feels better. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I learned. So sometimes when it hurts, when it initially goes in, have them take out and try, adjust and try again. Mm-hmm. And then maybe they'll have a better glide in. Mm. I love like you bring like your extensive medical knowledge to <laughs> so this participation. I'm like, look, guys. Yeah, like vascular. <laughs> yeah, it's like tight in there. So be careful. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> what do you do to prepare for anal scenes? Anything in particular? I do a lot of like meditation. Like it's really important for me to be relaxed mm. because I'm not like an anal queen at no one really accesses that so much so much in my normal life. So it's mm-hmm. really tight in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really important for me to be relaxed. So I do a lot of meditation before I bathe. Like I'll take like like my little bath bomb bath and mm-hmm. really get into myself before I have an anal scene. Mm-hmm. And then before we actually fuck, I do ask for some time mm-hmm. to loosen up with my guy. Mm-hmm. Cause I gotta, I don't. We there's certain things you guys can't see yeah. in production. You guys must know. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to be comfortable, right? And let it glide in. So we warm up. Yeah, I warm up before anal scenes. But do you like? Do you do any kind of like? So I don't eat like. 24, I was gonna say like meal. like twelve hours before I, I I used to kill myself when I first started because I was like I was like I'm not about to be the poopy queen. <laughs> no, I'm not Ebony. You want to be the anal queen, yeah, not the poopy okay. queen. <laughs> so I don't want that accident, not that girl. So I used to really like before I had an anal scene, like literally like twelve hours before, like nothing to eat. Like that's sick. Mm-hmm. Like, don't do that, girl. Yeah. So I learned my body, which is important. So do an anal scene, figure it out. And like, I'm good with like six hours before. And sometimes mm-hmm. I can even eat like 30 minutes before I could have lunch. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, come on, it takes your body time to like manage. But the point is you have to know your body. Mm-hmm. So I'm at like maybe six hours before I don't eat. I'll just drink clear liquids and mm-hmm. Gatorade and stuff like that. Gummy bears are safe for me. So mm-hmm. I do gummy bears. Rice, you can do rice cause it's a carb. Mm-hmm. White rice is okay. Mm-hmm. You're not really, it kind of is a start. So it's going to more constipate you than make you poopy. Mm-hmm. So that's safe. But not like rice with like spinach in it or greens. Like I'm mm-hmm. talking just white rice, guys. Survival. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, you do your anal cleaning. That's really important. So I do that in the morning. Like before, when I get up, I'll do like an enema. Mm-hmm. And get that together. And then right before my scene, I ask for an hour time. I'll do it again. Make sure I'm nice and clean. And then we get to fuck in. Mm-hmm. And then, like, usually it's, like, 20 minutes of hell and heaven at all at the same time. But I <laughs> I don't die. So I'm still here. So it, it, it hap- it's fine for me. I don't mind them. <laughs> so what is it about, like, so you said you were a size queen. What is it about, like, the big dicks that you love? Like, is it? When it, they're hard. <laughs> Like, they well, look like yeah. huge, extra-large snicker bars. And it's like, wow. Like, you're, like, the size of my arm. Like, what the hell? You're blessed. Like, why do you have this big dick? It makes you, like, want to ask some questions. Like, you really walk around with this one. Yeah. And the fact that it's, like, hard for me. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like a visual thing too. It's like very there's visual for me. like there's so much. It's like a peacock with like the big oh, feathers. There behind. you go. And I love peacocks. <laughs> I'm that girl at the zoo. Like let's move on. Like no, <laughs> they're like peacocking. I want to stay here forever. You go to the bears. I like this. So it's just the visualization and the fact that it's just big. And I like mm-hmm. I like everything big. Yeah, glamorous. So what if? Okay, so so for <laughs> but all dicks matter. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. So that. for the for the guys who aren't necessarily as well endowed, um, what kind of advice would you give to them to sexually please someone like you? Learn how to fuck her to death. Like literally, like if it's oral, if it's with your, if you like fingering girls, maybe incorporate toys and not get jealous. It's just a toy. Mm -hmm. It's helping the situation. Don't Mm -hmm. be mad at it if we want to pull out a wand. It's not like... Guys can sometimes get annoyed with girls enjoying toys, Mm -hmm. especially the wand. Shout out to the wand because it's just orgasmic. But I think it's certain things that human beings probably can't really do anyway. Like, how are you going to get your tongue to, like, vibrate for real? (laughs) That's like, come on, let's just be realistic. So... I think smaller and not endowed 
people should just be confident in their sexual act and really fuck, like, ha- enjoy it. Because mm-hmm. I've, I've ran from small dick, but they're literally, like, being wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're, like, doing other shit, like, with other parts of their body that is, like, fucking me up. Like, whoa. So I don't even mind their dick being small. I just want it to get hard and get in my pussy so we can, like, get that penetration, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So kind of like a, more of like a, a con, like a confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Don't yeah. have small man complex. Mm-hmm. Complex. Let's have big dick energy. Big even dick if you're energy. small. Even if you're not a big dick. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It might be easier said than done for some people, I guess. It's we just should, like. Well, take it from Ebony and Holly. Like, it's totally okay. That's how God made you. And if not, get surgery. They have all kind of things. Penile implants. Now, I know that they have implants that can help you get hard if you're having erection problems, but can they really, like, make I your dick bigger? bigger? I have to research that. But, I, but, even, but that's the thing. Like, small, hard. Hard can fit in pussy. Mm-hmm. Like, and we can fuck. Yeah. The main thing is, like, we need it extended. So, we, and hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hard. <laughs> it's very important for any size dick. You need well, it hard. What about you? Like, what... What gets you going? You know, do you have anything in particular that a guy can do that, like, really gets you? I really enjoy foreplay. Mm -hmm. Guys, forget that. Like, they are totally into the foreplay for them. Like, and I don't mind sucking dick. I love it. Like, let's suck some dick. I got you because I love to see them wiggle and go crazy. (laughs) And like, yes, I'm in power. (laughs) But hello, like, from your dick to my pussy, can I get some? Like, suck my titties. Like, there's a body here. Like, su- mm-hmm. people forget the neck and the back mm-hmm. of, the, of the back. Like, that is, like, crazy for a girl. Like that To me, those are my erogenous zones. Hello, like, the back of my neck Holly and the back Randall's of my shoulders. Sex like, advice. Pff, forget Listen, it. you guys, there's a whole body here. And that's really, again, what we were talking about from the beginning with mm-hmm. nursing an adult. Like... Or, or medical in adult, like anatomy in adult. Like we're d- dealing with human bodies. Mm-hmm. So it's important to like excite the body. Mm-hmm. And what, my, what guys may not be aware of, that you orgasm every time you have sex if you come. Mm-hmm. That's your orgasm. That uh, mm-hmm. Your orgasm-ing. Women don't always do that. Yeah. You might not know that. Like we're fucking, our pussy's wet. We may be coming just by the penetration, but the orgasm. Some women have never even orgasmed. And they're like older. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if it's appropriate to tell you this, ma'am. Can I call you, ma'am? But I'll teach you if you want. <laughs> like, I know you're like my grandmother's age, but oh my God, don't die yeah. like this. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I was speaking to... um Katie Jane, I think I had her on my show and she used to work in a sex toy shop and she said, and she would like, you know, help women with vibrators and stuff like that. And she said it was, wasn't uncommon for her to come across like a middle-aged woman, someone who'd been married for 30 years, who'd never had an orgasm. Yeah. So it's, and it's really important to talk, communicate, I think when in sex, Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know corny stuff like really communicate like how does this feel is this good like Mm -hmm. do you like is it and are you feeling like it's important to communicate let me Mm -hmm. know how you feel like you know and I think a girl will teach you like I like to like to teach Mm -hmm. like when you're eating the pussy all you need is the the pearl tongue Mm -hmm. all that other stuff you're wetting my ass it's getting messy Mm -hmm. I don't know you're like what is this like what are we doing Give me the dick or whatever. Switch. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's important to communicate. Otherwise, you're in that place. And it's like, I'm bored with this. Like, stop licking all over me. Mm-hmm. And guys, for pussy eating, all you need is the pearl tongue. That is the orgasm place. It's the clitoris. Learn anatomy. Just open a book. They have, like, stuff in Barnes and Nobles where they're teaching, like, teens about puberty. Mm-hmm. Open it. There's, like, three holes. And- yeah. <laughs> The sad thing is that, I mean, you know, there's like no sex education in schools most of the time in most states. And so where people are getting a lot of their sex education is from porn, which is a fantasy. And there's some porn that is very much like about the foreplay and all that kind of stuff that we were just talking about. But, about. but you know, a lot of it is 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 not necessarily going to focus on that. I thank you for this type of opportunity because this is where we get to now educate because it is a thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of even young guys have problems with sex um, getting hard or mm-hmm. staying 
in the pussy, you know? And that's why they, you know, are women, pH balance, mm-hmm. BV, like dishing their lives to death. And that's totally the wrong way to handle things, you mm-hmm. know? Just education is important. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> I know. It's like kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, here we are, we're in the adult industry, um, you know, and it's a big part of our lives. And I mean, it is our life and, you know, we're obviously for it, but also too, I like want to caution people that like, this is not necessarily where you learn about how to have sex. Hello. You know, it's, it's a fantasy and I encourage you to, you know, there's podcasts out there. I mean, not necessarily just mine, but there's specifically like podcasts out there about sex and about like, you know, learning how to please a woman or please a man or about consent and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of resources out there, but I think that most people don't know where to find it. Especially with this OnlyFans way, mm-hmm. everybody's a porn star. You got a girl that work at Chick-fil-A and on Sunday <laughs> she doing content. Stop playing and shout out to you. I'm not judging. Come on. But it's important to understand to be tested. It is mm-hmm. illegal for us to shoot adult without being tested. No one's shooting you without a fresh test mm-hmm. and without a, a and current S- clean S- test. STD, STD test. STD full Just panel test. In we case some people think it's we? like a pop I know quiz. we have to. <laughs> Hello. We're talking about those. Um, and, and with the COVID thing, you know, monkeypox now. Like, hello. We're very safe. Dude. This is an industry, mainstream industry. We are celebrities. We just, <laughs> the... But everybody's fucking. Don't you see all these people? That's why I don't get it. But there's like two, for me, two type of people in the world at this point in my mind. It's all how we, life is perception. So my perception is, I don't judge you for fucking, for whatever you fuck for. Mine is, I do taxes on mine though. I'm monetized Mm -hmm. now at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm very safe at it. I do taxes on my, on my punani. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hello. Mm -hmm. So I'm a brand. This is a job. My pussy is a job now. So it's like, with that being said, I have to remember that I'm working with people. I am not going to get fresh tested and knowing I got all these scenes ahead and then go meet uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry, bring them to my house, fuck them to death, and then go back to um, set tomorrow and have this same confidence of that same test that I had. No, yeah. you better get tested again because you probably have something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can't I can't live my life that way. I got to think about other people. These people have families. You know, I ain't about to be that girl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it is very, very important to educate yourself. And I think that what you see in adult is just like go out and be like this porn star. You need to be tested. You need to be consented. Mm -hmm. You need to be legal adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people are surprised when they find out how much goes on behind the scenes. Like I've had more than a few people comment on like they're shocked that we have boundary checklists. Like really? Yeah. Like, we must have these checklists. We must make sure that... Because, thing, you know, education, historically, maybe when we didn't, we were more free about certain things or didn't have these things in check, things happened. And then mm-hmm. you learn, mm-hmm. like, you know, no, we're going to do a boundary checklist. Mm-hmm. We're going to film a boundary checklist. We're going to film you saying that you got paid today. And that you totally consented and enjoyed this scene. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You did, right? And it's on film because we know historically what can happen if we don't. So just putting things in check, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also, too, like I will say as a producer and director, it's very much on me to make sure that the girl is of present mind and, and guy too, actually, I shouldn't just say girl yeah, and cool. is doing okay girl. and making, you know, and that's why we have and a talent do. assistant on set. They, they do. Making, checking in constantly like you're, you know. Do you so guys the, hear that? There's a whole crew, talent assistant, there's a producer, there's a video guy, one, two, three, like it's a whole team effort yeah. to make this happen for yeah. your enjoyment. Yeah. And just also making sure that, that people feel empowered to speak up. If there's something that they're not comfortable it's with, very, that's very important. And they give that, just so you guys know. Like, it's very, very visual, very, very verbal to make sure that you're comfortable on set, especially mm-hmm. for browsers. Yeah, browsers is very, very strict about yeah, that. Yeah, so. what? Um, is there anything about the adult industry that surprised you when you got into it? Um, hmm. 
You know, I feel like mainly the fact that I didn't know as many people watch porn. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Like, when they can actually recognize you. Everybody watches porn. They just don't admit it. Dude. <laughs> I was like, damn. You be out in a different, not even in your in the national way. Like, you be out in a different country. You be like, okay, now, you guys really be watching this. It's do you a get lot rec- of people. Do you I get do. recognized a I lot? Do. I do. And how how is that for you? Are you okay with that? I'm cool with it now. Because it's, it's making me know that, like, especially when I go out of L.A. Mm-hmm. or out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And I go out of town or, or out of country. It'd be like, okay, you doing something, girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be yeah. something if I'm doing this stuff and ain't nobody recognize me. I'd be like, damn, I got to bust it open more. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to squirt on somebody's nose or like suck their nose or something. And like, like, I ain't nobody care. So like, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. But I did not know. That's what surprised me. It's like, y'all be watching porn? Ooh. <laughs> it's a lot of people too. Yeah. <laughs> have um how are your fans generally when they approach you? Have you had any bad experiences no. or is everybody pretty good? Well, let's take that back. I had a weird experience where this guy just wouldn't go away. Mm. And I was I already had addressed him and like, oh hey, you know, saw me. I was at a private hair appointment and they had to like tell him to leave because he was doing weird shit. Like he wouldn't leave. Really? Yeah, he was. He wanted his picture, but I wasn't into a picture right then. I, I already said hello. Yeah, it was one of them things. I was with my assistant. We was getting my hair done. I was like, "Bye, I got you. Hi, bye. Mm-hmm. Now go." He wouldn't go, so they had to escort him out. He left. Was so he there. was just hanging out in the hair hanging salon. out. He just... came up there talking about he wanted to buy some weed for his wife. Like your wife, like because they sold they sold hair too mm-hmm. at the hair um, hair salon, but it was a private appointment. They wasn't even open. He just seen me. Mm-hmm. And he was he came up there. He was like, um, how, how, they were, he was talking weird. Like he wanted to buy something. Mm-hmm. And yeah. keep looking for Ebony. Yeah. Like, he was like, get out of here. And I was telling, I told my hairdresser, like, that guy just seen him outside. Like, he's here for me. Like, please. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. So whoever you are, you scared me. So what is the best way for a fan to approach you if they see you in public? Like, just be normal. Mm-hmm. X for things. If you want a picture, ask for one. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Don't be weird with me. Mm-hmm. Don't touch me. Mm-hmm. Don't grab it. Like, I wouldn't do that if I wasn't famous mm-hmm. or I wasn't in this place or or I wasn't a porn person. Or, And I've done, before Adele, I was also not just nursing a celebrity stylist. Like, so I worked with A-listers. Mm-hmm. They don't like it. You yeah. gotta, uh, like, you have to set boundaries with people, like, would you do that on a normal occasion? Just walk up to somebody and grab on them? Yeah. Like, you would scare them. Yeah. So I just don't want people to be aggressive with me. I'm a person. Even though you see me having sex and this and that, and that's maybe how you know me. Thank you. I love the industry for that. I'm nothing bitter or bad about it. That's what I'm doing. But don't treat me like that in person. Yeah, do you think that people feel like they oh, have very, a license to touch you because they see yes. you as a sex object? And I also think that maybe a lot of, not a lot, excuse me, let me take that back, pause. Some of our coworkers in the industry, especially at these expos and stuff, these conventions, give that. I was going to ask you that because I, I've come across that before where people have argued about that because... Some performers are, yeah, absolutely fine with you grabbing them. They'll put their hands on you. But not everybody's like that. So these guys think, oh, this person's okay with this. Mm -hmm. I can treat everyone like Mm -hmm. that. So, again, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Consent with anything you do is important when we're doing with dealing with adults. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe you get get somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you would ever date a fan? Mm Mm-hmm. I would. I don't know about dating industry people. Hmm. Why is that? And I'm talking mainstream, whether you do music or this or that, unless we can come with a common ground, because I just want somebody that's not like me. I just do. Like I, my, I like like a tech guy. Or, God, I'm so with you on that. Like a my nerd. my husband works in law. You know, like I people have always asked me, like, have you dated someone in the industry, or have you ever like fucked a porn star? And I'm like, for me, well, nothing against like, but my 
And nothing my, against, please make yeah, it. Yeah, Because we're not better on a top nothing. No, no, no. It's just how our preference, what we like. I'm very much like, I like to be with somebody who's the kind of person who prefers to be like behind the scenes. In, you know, like I want to be the star of the relationship. Hello? I'm always attracted so we, we, to the quieter guy. That's us. Like the more who like knows what to do with yeah. my stuff, but don't, don't care about none of that. Just it's all you, baby. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. So that's what I would like. That's my somebody who's totally maybe even like of course they would sing my porn, but not like because I've had relationships where my man would be watching my porn and I'm sitting right there. Mm. That's weird to me. You're like I'm right here. You get every real thing. Yeah, like, what the (laughs) hell? Like, I get it, but... Yeah. Cut it off sometimes. Do you have a hard time dating? I'm not dating, and I think I'm just busy. I don't think it's hard. I just think... I'm not looking for, like, when it's going... I will know, because I like people, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's not hard. It's just not happening yet. You're not Right now. I was dating, but it got sticky. Mm-hmm. You know how sticky it gets? Yeah. So Dating is hard enough as it is. Yeah. And then like the, oh, excuse me, the adult thing. And I don't know. And it'd be like, it's that person again. You know, mm-hmm. it's who they are. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I'm not about to repeat it or show it. It's not wearing it on my shoulder when I'm home. Mm-hmm. I'm normal. I want to relax. I want to go to the spa. Like, let's do some fun. Like, let's do, like, shot o'clock. Like, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Not, like, ah, fuck that all day. Like, yeah. I'll give that. But, and even in my intimate life, like, off camera, I don't want you to, like, gag me to death. Mm-hmm. Like, let's have intimate sex. Like, it's cool to gag me, but, like, don't just keep doing it. Like, mm-hmm. let's enjoy two, three hours. Like, that's what I'll do. Like, filming is like 20 minutes of penetration, 25. Mm-hmm. It depends what you do. Yeah. Know. But you know. Yeah. Oh, I like, know. Like, so. I got a clock set. Yeah. I'm like, uh-huh. how much you more know? time do we need? So in that 25 <laughs> minutes, y'all got to give what needs to be gave. Like, we need these positions. We need y'all to be, like, excited, keep the energy. Mm-hmm. But at home, I don't mind fucking for two, three hours. But, like, I don't want to, I want to be able to, like, have energy for it. Mm-hmm. Like you ain't gotta out fuck me at yeah. home because you're like, not performing. For th- that's what I'm audience. trying to say. Yeah, thank you. You got it. That's what it is. So if I could find someone who's just normal and can like turn it off and like still have fun with me, because I'm amazing mm-hmm. and I want an amazing guy, mm-hmm. not like a creep. Yeah. What do you like to do in your free time? Relax, boring shit. The stuff people probably think I wouldn't love to do. I will. I'll be that girl. Like, let's go to the spa. And let's have mimosas and, like, giggle at the water. Like, mm-hmm. talk. Like, golden girl shit. Like, fun. Like, pampering. That's what I love to do. Golden when girl I'm t- on my time off. And I'm you giving, like, Betty White to me. And I'm like, <laughs> the other ones. Because you're the beautiful girl. But, yeah, like, I don't know. I just like to relax and be normal. I don't really have days off, though. Mm. I have to give myself a day off. Mm-hmm. Like literally, you like have to schedule it. I have to yeah. do the same thing. You see, it's yeah. like because on my, I still am ebony when I'm not shooting company mm-hmm. mainstream scenes. I still have my own businesses and stuff like that. So technically, I have to literally give. Like today is your day off. Mm-hmm. Give your assistants your phones. Turn no, it's no social media. Mm-hmm. But it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I know, especially when social media is the place that you promote your product that you're selling. You know, it's hard to and Instagram. Stay off of like, that. can we just come up with a medium? This is my tenth page. Wow. I've been only in the industry almost three years now. I've been verified for like a week and a half. Really big pages. This is my tenth page. Like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but because see, with you guys, like, shout out to you and Playboy and. But like, but you guys must got the plug because you guys be giving the nudity and sometimes it'd be like beautification and like my titties be in my shirt and it might be something like this and I get like deleted. No, I know. I'm it's like, really what is the medium? I'm not showing anything. Like it's, I just, it's just a bra. There's definitely, it's definitely Leave not fair at all. Leave like, us alone. For sure. 
Even Riley Reed, she was saying, like, her thing was, like, let Riley live. Like, mm-hmm. come on. Like, we don't understand the medium. Mm-hmm. And I get the wilding. Like, girl, you're not supposed to be. Like, the safer community, mm-hmm. the titties and emojis. Like, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not even trying to give that. I understand, like, leave the sex for paid subscription. Like, I get that already. I'm mm-hmm. not trying to give that. But, like, even for the most simplest things, your page literally will be gone. Mm-hmm. And there's no medium. And you need that to promote. You know, that's the way the world, social media, Instagram, TikTok, it's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely not fair. And I've definitely put some stuff up where I'm like, am I going to get away with this? And like, it's still up there. Like, I haven't had a lot of problems you with that Instagram. Girl. I'm trying to be that girl. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Instagram, I think, I think it's Zuckerberg. probably because Facebook. I'm a photographer. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can't explain it. But you fire, and that's the thing. Like, I just want to be able to... But the, but the thing is to show what well, using Instagram, what, what it's for. I think Adele, we need to understand, like, turning it off, too. Mm-hmm. So some accountability to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I would... Twitter <laughs> yeah. versus Instagram, two whole different things. You yeah. do that if you want to. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's just education about that, too, because I thought maybe they was connected. Yeah. Like, whoa, you can't put that on Instagram, girl. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's definitely biased and there's no rhyme or reason. It's just kind of like It just one is of those what things. it is. So yeah. I'd be good now. I'm being great. I'm showing me at church. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're not gonna get me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ebony. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Amazing time. Thank you for having me. I love you. Aww, like, you shout out to Mark Spiegler. Like, he was like, Holly, everyone loves Holly. And shout out to your mom. Like, your mom must have been an amazing person because you're just amazing. It shows in everything that you do. Like, the thank glam, you. you're so perfect in every way. So, I thank you for having me. Girl thank power. You. Shout out to the fans. Thank you for supporting me. Y'all can find me on browsers. That's where I work. Those are my, that's my family. It's, Shout out to browsers. My OnlyFans, OnlyFans.com slash Ebony underscore Mystique. Twitter, Ebony Mystique One. Instagram, ah, Instagram. For now. For now. <laughs> the real Ebony Mystique underscore. I, did, I started a production studio. You guys come fuck there. I open it up to Adele. If you want to do your Google, Twitter, super cute. Follow me, luxury underscore. Anyway, I'll post everything. But thank you for your guys' support. There's so much more to come. I'm super excited. I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys can find me on Instagram at Holly Randall um, and on Twitter. Same handle at Holly Randall. Um, TikTok, Holly Randall unfiltered until I get deleted. I know I say that every episode. It's never going to happen. The, dude, Don't no. Do tw- it. Actually, TikTok hates me, man. TikTok they are hates constantly us too. threatening to They're delete horrible. Me. Yeah. Come on, guys. They, the, the world needs us. <laughs> don't do that. I'm trying to be good, but they just, they don't like us, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and we're going to do a little Q&A to get to know a little bit more about Ebony. And you will be able to access that at my Patreon, where you can also see these live streams. And of course, support my podcast, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.